we have this rotating rod that's rotating about this axis with constant angular velocity omega. We need to find the resultant moment that is the torque resultant torque of the centrifugal forces relative to the point C. Now point C is here. So what we need to calculate is with respect to rotating frame of reference C. Because if you rotate a point, nothing changes. So why this uh, I have written this clarification here is because when it says relative to the point fixed to the rod, the rod is actually rotating and point C is on the rod. So point C is actually rotating frame of reference. So some people think that because point C lies on this axis also, the point C can be a ground reference frame. That is not the case. Point C is on the rod, fixed to the rod. Therefore, what we need to calculate is net torque of centrifugal forces with respect to rotating frame of reference C. All right, now let's do it. So because uh, the the rod is rotating, so of course there's going to be centrifugal force that's going to pull the, the lower part of the rod towards left and the top part of the rod towards right with respect to our rotating frame of reference. So you can imagine that uh, each of the points on the rod are traveling in different circles and the acceleration is omega square r and omega is constant for each point but r is different so centrifugal force on each element is going to be different so let's take one element that is at a distance x and its width is dx and let's calculate the centrifugal force and the torque because of that small centrifugal force and then we'll integrate that torque to find the total torque acting on this rod so centrifugal force with respect to rotating C point of the rod. So the centrifugal force DF is dm into omega square into x sine theta because the radius it is traveling in is x sine theta. MA, M is dm and acceleration is omega square x sine theta. So dm we can write as dx by L into M and simplify that into this not torque with respect to C. So of this DF force about C point torque will be this angle will be theta as well. So DF cos theta into X or DF into X cos theta. So DF into this height, which is X cos theta. And now we'll put the value of DF here. So we get a relation between, uh, so we get the torque in terms of x alone because theta is a constant. So now we integrate it from minus L by 2 to L plus L by 2 because we can see that the sense of the torque because of this centrifugal force and this centrifugal force is same. So the at this particular moment, let's say the, the direction of torque is inside the plane because of these and these both. So let's integrate this and we'll get our answer. Yeah, I forgot to <laughs> mention this. So I should have told this in the beginning. So like I was saying that uh, because all the particles are traveling in different circles, the one that is at the edge, so that will be traveling in the biggest circle and its acceleration will be omega square r. So centrifugal force will be dm into omega square r. So if r is more, the element here is going to experience the most centrifugal force. And here it's going to experience the minimal centrifugal force. And of course, because of this element, the force is more and length is also more. So the contribution of torque of this element is much higher than contribution of this element. So yeah, that is the first point. Next is due to this centrifugal torque, rod tends to go horizontal. So you can imagine that the rod will try to stabilize and become horizontal. Now it does not because rigid fixed joint at C provides counter torque that prevents that. So this C point is of course not a hinge. 
if it were a hinge it will become horizontal immediately so this is a rigid welded joint because of this welded <laughs> joint here that's going to provide a strong counter torque so this joint has to be very strong in order to maintain this rotation of the rod all right